There's a spectrum with games about knights and vikings regarding how much they lean into the popular perception of history rather than reality. Ancestor's legacy definitely falls on the end that would make Braveheart seem like a PBS documentary, with Norse warriors screaming about Valhalla and how much fun it is to slaughter peasants. While it may not live up to its claims of being a historically accurate depiction of the harsh, brutal times of the medieval era, it is a reasonably entertaining squad-based RTS. The bread and butter of its six historically inspired campaigns, multiplayer, and skirmish versus AI modes is a familiar and well-designed throwback to RTS classics. You build a main base that produces units while capturing and fortifying smaller villages that generate resources around the detailed, tactically interesting maps. Units are organized into squads of 5 to 10, creating a level of intimacy that reminded me a lot of Company of Heroes in mostly positive ways. Each of the four factions has a unique identity and preferred playstyle that keeps things from stagnating. The Vikings' offense-focused infantry are the best around, but they lack good horsemen. The Germans have excellent heavy-mounted knights, the English have the best bowmen by far, and the Slavs get horse archers that open up some deadly hit-and-run tactics. I wasn't the biggest fan of how the core infantry warfare works, though. The three melee units are spearmen, shield-bearers, and axemen, which have a rock-paper-scissors relationship to one another. While it's possible to counter an enemy's army composition by building a lot of the unit that counters the one they're focusing on, I found that engagements between well-balanced forces ultimately came down to luck. If I happened to have my spearmen in the center and my opponent had axemen there, I usually didn't have enough time to adjust between spotting the enemy and battle being joined. Archers and cavalry allow for much better in-the-moment decision-making, thankfully. Ranged units are very powerful, but can inflict a devastating amount of friendly fire if, for instance, they're firing over the backs of your own army at a unit that has engaged them in melee. Positioning of archers and using my own archers to quickly and decisively counter the enemy's own ranged troops, or executing a rear cavalry charge from concealment right when the enemy was committed, created many of the most satisfying moments I had. Unlike infantry skirmishes, it really felt like my planning and quick thinking won the day over pure statistical advantages. Ancestor's Legacy explores some interesting territory across its 30 total campaign missions. There are a number of fairly competent stealth missions, a few exciting, historically inspired set-piece battles that ditch base building to have you command a wing of a larger army, and even a particularly enjoyable excursion in which you must unite all the Polish tribes of a region, either politically or militarily, to fend off a looming German attack. Saying they can play fast and loose with history is a hilarious understatement, however. The Viking campaign in particular was almost cringeworthy, depicting the Norsemen as bloodthirsty berserkers and portraying the raid on Lindisfarne, which was essentially a small group of pirates robbing a largish, undefended church, as a siege of a heavily fortified citadel right out of the Crusades. It chafes me as a history fan, but I can see why a mission based around mugging some unarmed monks wouldn't be exactly enthralling. A lot of the more traditional conquest missions became far more infuriating, and not for the lack of historicity. Several campaign levels give the resource-deprived AI the ability to continually crank out units almost faster than you can kill them when their main base is threatened. This artificial difficulty didn't add anything to those missions other than duration, which caused them to greatly outstay their welcome. More often than not, Ancestor's Legacy showed me a good time watching my Berserkers, Teutonic Knights, and Slavic Tribesmen hack their way through the forest's marshes and occasional open field. The weakness in the core infantry combat, which tilts a bit too much away from quick tactical thinking and into correctly guessing how the enemy line will be arranged, was the main issue that kept me from really coming to love it. Historical inaccuracies aside, though, it scratched my itch for a traditional RTS in a way that will probably keep me coming back. For more Norse action, check out our reviews of God of War, Jotun, and Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia. And for everything else, stick with us at IGN.